His Excellency Benigno S. Aquino III, President of the Philippines. Thank you. Please stand. Secretary Genovaya, Director General William Hodgkins III, Congressman Mel Sarmiento, Commissioner Ricardo David, Mr. Ramon Ang, Mr. Manuel Tiveros, Board of Directors, Former Directors, General Employees of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, for, um, excuse me, fellow workers in government, honored guests, Maminamal ko pong kabuhayan, magandang maga po sa inyo The Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines was born during a difficult time for our country. In 2007, our nation was floundering under a leadership that prioritized self-interest over public service. Our people had lost their trust in government, and to make things worse, in December of that year, the Philippines was downgraded from Category 1 to Category 2 by the United States Federal Aviation Administration, preventing our airlines from expanding their flights to and from the United States. In response to the downgrade, your agency was established. Your purpose? To improve on the findings on Philippine aviation to make certain that we get back on track at the soonest possible time. But because of a culture of governance which lent itself to impunity, the problems only worsened. In October of 2009, the International Civil Aviation Organization conducted an audit of our aviation standards and found significant safety concerns. Promptly, in March of 2010, the European Union banned all Philippine aircraft from flying into their country, citing, and I quote, serious and persistent non-compliance of Philippine Civil Aviation Authorities in overseeing and checking of aircraft, close quote. All these developments deprived our airlines access to the potentially lucrative markets in those regions. Even worse, it became much harder for tourists from Europe and the United States to fly here and see just how fun it is in our country. Until now, we can only speculate about how many tourists could have arrived, how many jobs could have been created, and how our airlines could have grown. If only, and I repeat, if only our predecessor displayed a little urgency, efficiency, and at least a bare minimum regard for rendering public service. Those years were ones of squandered opportunity, where instead of making progress, we took giant steps back. It actually reminds me of what a friend once told me, that the most frustrating part about our predecessor is that they had an entire decade to build our nation, not to mention a talented workforce and a country with boundless natural gifts. And yet, somehow, during that period, we only regressed. Today, we are in the business of revival. And so far, the CAP leadership, together with all those working earnestly for this agency, have not let us down. To comply with safety standards, CAP installed a civil aviation safety oversight reporting and tracking system as, it, as its main database management system. They efficiently implemented the minimum required annual inspection for all air operators and revalidated the air operator certificate of five international operators and several other air taxi operators and domestic air operators. They likewise established the certificate management department to help our local carriers, such as Philippine Airlines and Subu Pacific, to meet the standards of other countries and help them expand their routes. Through these efforts and through the stern disciplined stewardship of Director General Hotchkiss, the ICAO lifted the significant safety concerns previously issued to the Philippines. This took the effort of each person who works for this agency, and I extend my gratitude to all of you for all of your honest and hard work. For those of you who have been working for CAP since its inception and have endured its lowest points, doesn't this truly make you feel much better? But while I'm here today to congratulate you for a job well done and for celebrating your fifth anniversary, I would also like to remind you that the job is not yet over. In the coming days, weeks, and months, all of us will be working towards getting our country off the watch lists of the United States and the European Union. So today, I also give you my marching orders. Let's get this done. We have the momentum, we have the right people, and have put the right systems in place. It is time for us to usher in a golden age, not just for Philippine aviation, not just for Philippine tourism, but for our entire country. It is not difficult to imagine. 
Soon, even more tourists will be riding our airlines to see what our, our, our archipelago has to offer. And they will realize that nowhere on earth can they see a country as beautiful and diverse as ours. Soon, our airlines may be flying back and forth to cities like New York, Madrid, and Rome. Soon, all of our countrymen will finally be able to feel the full effect of having a country and a people predisposed to friendliness and fun in the form of more tourists, more jobs, and improved business for our souvenir vendors, tour guides, taxi drivers, hotel staff, and those in so many other allied sectors and even in divergent sectors. At the end of the day, the value of your job cannot be reduced to a single safety classification or a few numbers in our ledgers. It is about allowing people to fly with confidence. It is about freedom freedom from unease, and freedom of opportunity that redounds from a dynamic, vibrant society. If I may emphasize just how important I consider your agency to be. Just last week, I was in Naga and was reminded that it had been seven months since the Piper Seneca plane that was carrying the Secretary Jesse Robredo crashed off Masbate. Eight days ago, we also commemorated the 56th anniversary of the deaths of President Ramon Magsaysay and many of his top officials in an aviation accident. The bottom line is, what you do each and every day affects our people both on an individual and national level. In the future, as you celebrate your 10th, your 20th, or even your 50th anniversary, in what we hope will be an even more prosperous Philippines, I am hopeful that your excellence will have been sustained. As your president, I encourage you to remember the significance of your responsibilities each and every day you step in your office, that you are allowing our tourists, our people, and ultimately our country to soar to even greater heights. You are making certain that the theme of your anniversary today becomes an enduring truth, that indeed, our future is in the skies. General Huskins earlier said that uh, he thanks me for giving him an opportunity to be again of service to the people. Perhaps I should apologize that I should have looked for you from the onset so that we could have had all of these corrections at the soonest possible time. Thank you for entering service. Thank you and good day. Maraming salamat po. Mahal na Pangulo.